everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I am so excited because today we are going to be talking about my reading goals for... Yes, Willow. <laughs> my dog Willow is sitting in my chair and she's staring at me. Would you like to say hello? <laughs> Hi! Say hello! Hi everybody! We are going to be talking about my reading goals for... What are you looking at? What are you looking at? We are going to be talking about my reading goals for 2022 and also some specific books that I want to read. Kind of a general TBR. I most likely will not read all of them because it's a very long list. It's just the books that I really have my eye on, have been intending to read for ages, and that is one of my goals which I will get into very soon. She is currently staring at, um, my neighbors across the street are doing a lot of renovations on their house, so if you hear any banging noises, they are nailing some kind of paper on the house. I don't really know what it is. My dad would know. I do not. But anyway, so I'm going to start talking to you guys about my um, 2022 reading goals and then I will go through my bookshelves and talk about some of the books that I want to read. I don't really want to go into too much depth with them just because there are so many books that I want to talk about and if I did this video would be so long it's probably already going to be really long. So anyway, without further ado, Willow is like shaking. She's very excited. What? Do you see them out there? What are they doing? So let's start talking about reading goals. The first reading goal that I have is to read more broadly. When I started reading much more for pleasure, when I really was really getting into watching booktube before I even made my channel, I read really broadly. I read from a bunch of different genres. One day I would read a sci-fi, the next day I would read a fantasy, the next day I would read a classic, the next day I would read poetry, the next day I would read a bunch of different genres, and I loved it because it kept it really exciting, and I don't do that anymore. Especially in 2021, I kept reading, kept reading classic after classic after classic after classic, classic, and I loved doing that because I love classics and I love that you guys love that I love classics, <laughs> but at the same time, it did get quite monotonous and it sort of made me not appreciate the books and the beautiful classics that I was reading because they were trudging me down a bit. So one of my biggest reading goals this year is to not is to try not to read too many classics back to back and to try and read more broadly. One day I want to read a fantasy, the next day I'm going to read um, a middle grade, the next day I want to read a classic, and the next day I want to read, or not the next day, but whenever I finish, I want to read a bunch of different genres, read more broadly, just so that I prevent myself from getting trudged down from too many books of the same genre. Even, I know like when I read too many middle grades back to back, that gets a little monotonous. Too many literary fiction books, that gets monotonous. So I think changing up my reading and reading more broadly is going to be very beneficial, prevent me from getting into reading slumps, and I think it'll just be really exciting because I'll be able to appreciate each book for what it is on its own. Like, I think I'll be able to appreciate the classics more when I'm not reading so many back to back. A big goal of mine is to read books that have been on my shelves for ages. I know that that is a reading goal that many people have. That is especially a goal of mine because there are so many books that I have on my shelves that have literally been on my shelves since 2015. 2015? 20? No. Probably. Well, 2015? I mean, I'm sure there is one that's been... Yes. Yes, definitely. The Fault in Our Stars has been on my shelves since probably like... 2014. Um, but yeah, I really want to read books that have been on my shelves for ages, and I'm going to be pulling off books in a little bit, so you will see. I'll point out which ones those are, but that's a really big goal of mine. I know so many people have that goal, but it's just very important because we, we buy books and put them on our shelves to be read, and then they aren't read, and what's the point of that? <laughs> So something that I really love doing that I think would be very fun to implement in 2022 is a way to prevent yourself from, or myself, from buying a bunch of books, putting them on my shelves, and not reading them, is specifically going out to the bookstore because for me, 
I only have one main bookstore near me, and it's Barnes & Noble, and they don't have a lot of books that I want to read, especially because I'm very picky with editions. They usually don't have the editions that I want, so I do a lot of my, um, my book buying online. Something that I want to do, though, is I want to have more of a fun experience buying books. Whether it's online or especially in person, I want to give myself maybe every few months just go to the bookstore, pick up a book, and read it immediately. Don't give myself the opportunity to, I'm just going to buy it because I'm interested in it to eventually read it. I'm going to buy it to read it, like start it that day. Get it and start it at the same day. I think that that would be really fun and it'll prevent me from having so many books on my shelves that I buy, put them on my shelves, and they sit there for years. So I also feel like that would be a nice excuse to go book shopping, which I don't need an excuse to go book shopping, I'll just go book shopping whenever, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Another goal is to keep going through my Penguin Little Black Classics, which are right over there. I love going through those because they're a perfect way to uh, get a taste of an author. I'll pull off a few. Okay. And just grabbed a random bunch of them. So yes, I have the box set. It came 1 through 80 and these are a great way to just dip your toe into an author, especially if you haven't read anything by them before. I didn't read as many of them as I would have liked to in 2021, so in 2022 I definitely want to keep making my way through my whole collection. You alright Willow? Why do you lay down, baby? Lay down. She's just sitting there all awkwardly. You, you okay? So my next reading goal is to keep rereading through the Beatrix Potter series. I got this beautiful box set for Christmas. I have been rereading through them in 2021 and then in 2022 I would love to finish my reread of the series. So this is just a wonderful um, reading experience that I have had and I can't wait to keep reading through them. So that is definitely something that I will most certainly be doing. Okay, now I'm going to get into picking out specific classics that I want to read and get to. A lot of these, so my main goal for reading classics is I want to pick out the major classic authors and read at least one book of theirs. There are so many classics on my shelves that I've had for ages and there are certain authors that I haven't read from before or I have read one of their books and so my goal is to pick an author and pick one of their works and try to get through as many of the major classic authors as I can. I think that'd be really nice to um, try and... sorry the lighting is changing because the sun is going behind clouds um, is to uh, get through the major classic authors that I want to read from but to specifically pick like one book at least from each of them. So I'm going to take you to my bookshelves and I'm going to go through some of the classics that I want to read in 2022 and some of the authors that I want to read in 2022. So the first one is Northern Grabby by Jane Austen. I have been meaning to read this book for ages and also my friend Sarah from her YouTube channel Sarah's Perusals and I have been meaning to buddy read this ever since we finished The Mysteries of Adolfo by Anne Radcliffe and we just haven't gotten to it, and we didn't get to it in 2021, more my fault than her fault because I just keep forgetting that we have been meaning to read this book. But anyway, this is the Jane Austen that I really want to read in 2022. I try to read at least one Jane Austen a year, but in 2021 I didn't read any Jane Austen, so maybe I'll read two of them this year, we'll see. Um, but this is definitely one that will be read this year, and I have to ask Sarah if she's still interested in doing that. Sarah, if you're watching, let me know. I will also probably message you about it. But that's definitely one. And then another one that I really want to read, one of my favorite authors is Thomas Hardy. I love Far From the Madding Crowd, I love Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and I love his poetry. And I really want to read Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. This is supposed to be like the male version of Tess of the D'Urbervilles in terms of it being really depressing and upsetting. It's supposed to be heartbreaking and if you know anything about me, I love a good heartbreaking story. Thank you! Do you like a good heartbreaking story, Willow? I don't know. Now moving into my different collections of classics. These are like my beautiful um, editions, my beautiful series together. 
Was that English? No. Um, the first one that I really want to read is Philip Pullman's Fairy Tales from the Brothers Grimm, and this is the Penguin Deluxe Edition. I really want to read more of the Grimm's Fairy Tales. I also really want to read Hans Christian Andersen's, but I don't have that edition. I also really want to get it in the Penguin Deluxe. Um, but I got this one last year for Christmas from my cousin, um, and I haven't read it yet. And I'm, I love fairy tales. It's one of my favorite, um, I guess, forms of writing. Would it be a, a genre? A subgenre? Willow's getting fidgety. Um, yeah, I love fairy tales. Bless you. So I definitely want to read Philip Pullman's um, edition. This is the Philip Pullman edition, but they're the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. And then also next to it is another book I really want to read. It is Middlemarch by George Eliot. This is a very hefty book that I know so many people love, and I have a really great feeling that I'll love it. I have high expectations, which I hope will be met. Um, Willow is sniffing the books. Are you picking out a read for me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so I know that this is going to be a long journey, but I have a really good feeling about that one, and it'll be my force, my forced. <laughs> My first George Eliot. Very exciting. Another one is, again, from Penguin Deluxe, The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I've never read The Wind in the Willows, and which is surprising because my dog's name is Willow. So you'd think she was named after The Wind in the Willows. She's not. She Willows are my favorite tree, and I wanted to give her a nature name, so that's why I named her Willow. But The Wind in the Willows, I'm going to read it also. Poor Willow. So that's that. Another one I really want to read is Ian Forster's Where Angels Fear to Tread or um, A Passage to India. So those are the two Forsters that I really, really want to read. Um, but I don't know. I want to try and read one, like I said, one from each major author, not read too many from one author. Unlike for Dickens and Tolstoy, though, the book club that I'm a part of, we're going to be reading a lot of Dickens and Tolstoy, obviously. So those are the two authors that are exempt from that rule. It's not really a rule, it's just something that I kind of want to try and stick to. Um, another one is over here, and that is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I really want to read more Virginia Woolf in 2022, and To the Lighthouse is the one that I am most eager to pick up. Um, again, like I said, I don't know honestly too much about these books, which is another reason why I'm not going too far into synopses, but very excited, have heard amazing things about To the Lighthouse. I also have Orlando, which is another one that I would love to read as well, but again, don't want to read too many back-to-back, -back, um, or too many of the same author. I want to read as many. You know. I don't have to say it. You know. Oh, an, a major one that I want to read that I can't believe I haven't read yet. I think it's kind of ridiculous. It is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. So many people love this book. I know I'm going to love this book because I already love the miniseries. I first watched the Richard Armitage miniseries like years ago, even before I got into reading classics, and I always loved it. Um, and I just want to read the book. I read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, and I honestly didn't like it that much. So I'm a little nervous in that sense, because is it her writing style or was it the story? I do really think it was just the story, but very excited to read this, because I do feel like I'm going to get on with this plot a bit more than the plot of Wives and Daughters. And then I do really want to read a, sh a new Charlotte Bronte this year. I have... Villette, and I have Shirley, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick. I also have The Professor, um, so I'm not sure about that one. Another one, a bunch more over here, is Heidi by Johanna Spirey. This is another classic that I got this edition actually from, um, was it from Mary? I have the, probably have the note in here. Yes, it's from Mary. So Mary got me this beautiful um, Puffin and Bloom edition of Heidi. This is one of her favorite books. And I grew up with the Shirley Temple Heidi when I was little. I love the story of Heidi. And I definitely want to read the books very soon. 
Um, this is quite a winter read, so maybe I'll read it soon, which would be lovely. And then next to it is another book that I really want to get to. Mary also got me this one, didn't she, for my birthday? She did. Yes, she did. <laughs> so that is The Blue Castle by Ella Montgomery. I love the Anne series by Ella Montgomery, so I really want to read The Blue Castle because I feel like I'm going to absolutely adore it. Willow is getting so heavy. Would you be alright if I put you down? Okay? Let's see. She does not look happy that I put her down. I know you guys probably love seeing her too, but she's just so heavy. I have three editions of Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Have I read it? No. So would I like to? Yes. Um, I got this one in my P.O. box from a viewer. I got this one. Um, this is my first edition of it. I think I got it at The Strand the first time I went to The Strand in New York City. And then um, that was even before I lived there for uni. And then um, I also have this really beautiful Alma Classics edition that I found when I was on holiday once with my family. And I just loved this edition. So I definitely want to read Tender as the Night this year because I have so many editions of it. I kind of think it's ridiculous that I haven't read it yet. And then I also really want to read um, an Ernest Hemingway. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge Ernest Hemingway fan. I've read most of his major works, um, but some that I want to read is his one of his first collections. Two of them fell. One of his first collections is In Our Time. This is a really short volume, so it won't take me very long at all. There's also The Garden of Eden, which is on my book stack. I really don't want to take it out. And then also his short story collection which I got recently. I kind of feel like I should make my way through his short stories because they're iconic and I feel like I I haven't read any of his short stories yet and I feel like I have to or need to and want to. So yes, maybe that'll maybe that'll happen. Oh, another one, another author I really want to read from and I have to pick one book from the few that I have. That's John Steinbeck. I have East of Eden. I have read in school, I read Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, obviously. Um, but I also have Once There Was a War, The Grapes of Wrath, the moon and the moon is down but I'm kind of leaning towards East of Eden and then um, I, I really want to watch the movie adaptation with is it James Dean I think it's James James Dean is the one that's it's East of Eden or Grapes of Wrath I think it's East of Eden um, so really 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 want to read uh, more John Steinbeck and yeah I think I might do East of Eden another one is Italo Calvino, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler. I want to read much more Italian literature. That is another goal of mine. I am Italian. My family is from Italy. I have a great passion for English literature and Russian literature, but I haven't read much Italian literature, and because it's my own, I really want to read much more. So that is a major goal of mine for 2022, is to appreciate the Italians because I am an Italian <laughs> and I love um, the concept of if on a winter's night a traveler the first line sounds incredibly interesting and just grips you right away chapter one the first line says you are about to begin reading Italo Calvino's new novel if on a winter's night a traveler relax concentrate dispel every other thought let the world around you fade best to close the door the TV is always on in the next room. Tell the others right away, No, I don't want to watch TV. Raise your voice. They won't hear you otherwise. I'm reading. I don't want to be disturbed. Maybe they haven't heard you. With all that racket, speak louder. Yell. I'm beginning to read Italo Calvino's new novel. Or if you prefer, don't say anything. Just hope they'll leave you alone. That's the first paragraph. I had to read the whole thing. That sounds incredible. I just want to read it right now, honestly. Maybe I should, but yes, this is definitely going to be read. So many. Then we have the Russians. The main Russians that I want to read, I definitely want to read another Dostoevsky. Let me bring you down. Well, should I bring you down there? I'm just going to tilt you. How about that? I, I really want to do a reread of Crime and Punishment because the first time that I read Crime and Punishment, uh, it, a lot of it went over my head and I feel like I didn't appreciate it as much as I 
will now that I've read much more Russian literature. This is such a weird angle. <laughs> but yes, definitely want to reread Crime and Punishment. I also want to read Notes from a Dead House. This was gifted to me from my friend Sarah and this is um one so one of my biggest goals for reading Russian lit this year is to read less Russian lit like less in book amount but more in page count so read less Russian books but have them be longer so that I spend the same amount of time reading them but instead of a bunch of short books less longer books does that make sense? I hope so. So one of them is House from uh, Notes from a Dead House. This is the Everyman's Library edition, edition translated by Richard Pavir and Larissa Volokonsky. Because um, I really fell in love with Dostoevsky in 2021, and in 2022 I want to read more of his longer works, as well as just more longer works of Russian literature in general, because I do feel like I'm much more... Uh, they're much more approachable to me now that I've read so many Russian lit. Um, Russian books. A book that I literally can't wait to read, oh my goodness, that is Mikhail Bulgakov's The Master and Margarita. I fell in love with The Heart of the Dog in um, the latter part of 2021, and now all I want to do is reread The Master and Margarita. So I can't wait to. I'm very, very excited. Um, I know that this is about the devil visiting yes he travels to moscow so that just are you kidding it sounds amazing i can't wait to read it uh i i love bulgakov just from reading the heart of the dog so i can't wait to read the master and margarita and then another one is chekhov i really want to read more of chekhov's plays uncle vanya the seagull the Cherry Orchard are three of the major ones that I really want to read. I know so many of you gave me great suggestions in my um, ranking Russian lit books, which is my last video. Um, I asked for suggestions for what Chekhov you think I should read next, and a lot of you gave me great suggestions, so I will be going through those. I also have... I want to read through more of his short story collection. I just read Ward 6, which was one of my favorites, so I want to read more from those. Um, I do have, I want to read more Gogol. I have Dead Souls, and I have The Inspector, which is a play. I also really want to read Oblomov, which is um, Ivan Goncharov's Oblomov. I have that one. More Pushkin. I definitely will be reading more Pushkin this year because last year, if you don't know, my favorite book of 2021 was Yevgeny Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. And I think I have Queen of Spades and I have The Captain's Daughter are like the two that are really speaking to me. So hopefully those will be read. Um, a bunch of Tolstoy is going to be read in 2022 because of the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club. Another Russian classic that I really want to read is Fathers and Sons by Turgenev, um, which I can't wait to get to. Another goal of mine is to read more Shakespeare in 2022 because in 2021, I don't know if I even read one Shakespeare play, which is really weird for me because the past few years, I've read at least one Shakespeare play. Um, the two that are calling my name the most are The Winter's Tale, which I want to read in the winter, so maybe I'll read this one soon. Um, that would be lovely. And then also The Tempest, which I have in the Macmillan Collector's Library edition. This, how gorgeous is that book? Don't look at me, look at the book. Isn't that so beautiful? These are some of my favorite editions. I love reading from them. So I have so many of those. Another classic that I want to read for the Macmillan Collector's Edition, so you can see there they are, is um, Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary, which I will just take out for you. How beautiful is that? So beautiful. I can't believe I haven't read Madame Bovary yet. I feel like that's one book that, like, I just feel like I need to read Madame Bovary. I'm gonna turn you again. I really want to read much more Shakespeare in 2022. Um, I also have Twelfth Night, which I really want to read. Twelfth Night, um, As You Like It. A Midsummer Night's Dream is one of my favorite plays. I'd love to reread it. That would be wonderful. 
Um, oh, another one is Beckett's Waiting for Godot. This is a book that my best friend Anna wants me to read desperately, or play, shouldn't say book, play, and I have yet to read it. And she keeps asking me, have you read Beckett yet? Have you read Beckett yet? No, not yet. But I do have a beautiful copy. It will be read. Um, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it because she said that she studied it in school and that it was, it was so bizarre and strange and she didn't like it at first and then it really grew on her. Um, I have to point something out because I just looked at it and I'm talking about Anna. I have a little story time for you guys. Okay, so speaking of Anna, she and her boyfriend Brian are my one of my two best friends. I love them so much. They are so supportive. They are just the best. And every time I go and hang out with them, um, Brian is hilarious. He just makes the funniest comments. He always makes me laugh. Same with Anna too, but Brian is just hilarious. And so I always say I wish I had a pocket-sized Brian to carry around with me, like keep him in my pocket, and he'll just tell me jokes throughout the day and make me laugh and make me smile um, when I need it. I, so I always say whenever he makes a joke or anything, I need a pocket-sized Brian, I need a pocket-sized Brian. So for Christmas, <laughs> Anna made me <laughs> a pocket-sized Brian. So this is my friend Brian, in bookmark form. Um, they asked, are you going to put it on your YouTube channel? I said, is that okay? And they said that they're waiting for it to be on the channel. So here's Brian, everyone. Meet my friend Brian. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Double-sided, and it's a magnet. <laughs> So, um, I now have a pocket-sized Brian. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me jokes or speak, but... I'll just have to go to the real Brian for that, but yes, this is just the funniest thing ever. Um, he and I were just talking about the Witcher series, um, which is another thing that I want to get to. I'm going to get to contemporary fiction very soon, which is going to be more towards that. I feel like, I feel like I'm done talking about classics. I think that might be all the classics because this would be a great transition. Yeah, other classics that I want to read, I want to get back into reading poetry, continuing reading Walt Whitman, Mary Oliver, Anna Ekmatova, um, also reading more Rilke. I need to read the Book of Hours for a buddy read that I'm currently in, um, I'm currently a part of, but anyway. Now we can get on to contemporary lit, so I'm gonna get a book. So the other day, out of the blue, I decided to start watching the series The Witcher on Netflix because season two just came out, everybody was talking about it, and then I remembered when the season one came out, my, my roommate at the time when I was in college, um, we were living together in our dorm and it was just her and I in, in, in this one like open concept room. Our, it was the kitchen, the living room, our beds were in there, it was just one big room, city living. And, um, and she was watching The Witcher and I was watching while she was watching, um, whenever she was watching it while I was around. And I really liked it and something about my, my taste, I have very eclectic taste. I like a lot of different things, same with music, same with TV shows, same with books. I like a lot of different things, although books I feel like I'm more streamlined with classics. Um, but I'm trying to break out of that, which I think is, is a good thing. Um, and be open to more things. Anyway, so I remember really liking the scenes that I was watching with her of The Witcher, and then I... I decided to start watching The Witcher, so I started obviously from the beginning with season one. I'm in, I was maybe 15 minutes into the first episode, um, Brian, my friend Brian and I have never talked about The Witcher before, and then he texts me. While I'm watching the first episode, I, I didn't tell him I started the show, we've never spoken about the show to each other, I didn't know he liked it, he texted me, have you watched The Witcher? And I was like, what? How do I? How does he know? So then I sent him a picture of my screen and I was like, are you watching me? Like, what the heck? What's going on? He's like, that's so crazy. So we started talking about The Witcher. He was asking if I've read the books before because he loves the show so much he's thinking about reading the books. 
Anyway, I watched the show, I fell in love with it, Brian and I were talking all about it, and I loved it so much that I want to start reading the book. Um, this is the first short story collection that people suggest you start with. It's The Last Wish. This is also a really beautiful illustrated edition that I found at Barnes & Noble. I believe it's only a US publication, but I'm sure you could find it online somehow if you wanted to get it. Um, it is beautifully beautifully illustrated. It was a bit pricey, but I had a gift card, so I didn't pay for it myself. It was more like a Christmas gift through my aunt and uncle, who the gift card was from. There's this one illustration that I absolutely love. So I'm going to start it maybe today. I'm very excited. Oh, this one. Look at that illustration. Is that not stunning? Oh, Geralt. Oh, I have such a crush on Geralt. I mean, it's Henry Cavill. Like, how can you not have a crush on him? So yes, um, this is going to be towards breaking out of my comfort zones and reading more broadly and reading more fantasy because I love, like, magical worlds. I love world building. I love magic systems. And that's something that I really want to get back into that I have kind of fallen out of. And especially in my own writing, I love magical realism. And uh, the fact that I don't read a lot of it, I, I think is quite silly. So, yes, I'm very excited. And then... <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I'm going to use my Brian bookmark for my Witcher reading, which I just think will be perfect. I'll put him on there already. There he is. Brian, if you're watching this, you and I are going to read <laughs> The Witcher together. Oh, God. Anna, thank you so much for this amazing Christmas gift. Brian had nothing to do with the bookmark as well. And I asked him, I was like, how do you feel about, how do you feel about this? And he goes, honestly, a little creeped out. And I said, I don't blame you. I would be creeped out too. <laughs> now, another book series that I want to keep reading, which I started with the audiobooks. Um, I have them right here. And then when I got the Witcher book, I also picked up these three books with my gift cards as well. And that is the Series on Fortunate Events books by Lemony Snicket. So we have, I read the first two or listened to the first two on audiobook, which is The Bad Beginning. I love these illustrations as well, like how beautiful. I love the US publications, I think they're just such gorgeous designs. So we have The Bad Beginning, and then we have The Reptile Room, which is the second in the series, and then I want to start physically reading them because I love the audiobooks, but I feel like I really just want to read them with my own eyeballs. Um, so this is The Wide Window, a book the third by Lemony Snicket in the series of Unfortunate Events. So this will hopefully be read soon as well. Something that I want to do more in 2022 as well is, especially with series, and I believe, well really just this series, is to buy them as I read them. Because a lot of the times I buy box sets and then I take a while to go through them and I feel like it would be really fun to finish one of the books and then be excited to go out and get the next one and read it right away. It's kind of like the same thing that I was saying. I want to go to a bookshop, actually get the book and read it right then and there. I think that that'd be really fun and then watch the collection grow, not just have the box set and read through it, but grow the collection as you read it. I think would be really fun. So that's something that I really want to read um, or keep reading and then I'm going to move us up to my contemporary section because actually I have one right here that I want to read. I could just grab it. Um, a contemporary book that I really want to read is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I got this book right when it came out. I ordered it through Waterstones because I wanted the beautiful Waterstones edition and I have yet to read it why? I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is focusing on Shakespeare's family, particularly his children and his wife, and how his son Hamnet was sort of the inspiration for Hamlet, and everybody raves about it. I literally have not heard one bad thing about this book, and so I, I can't wait to read this book. I absolutely can't wait to read it, and I hope to read it very, very soon. Another contemporary book I desperately want to read is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Um, this is a novel about um, a young boy who is writing, he's um, 
Vietnamese and he's writing to his mom who can't read and he's writing to her knowing that she's never going to read this. So I can't imagine the vulnerability and the the heart and soul of this book. I feel like it's just everybody talks about how it's so beautiful and moving and uh, it's so many people's favorites and um, Ocean Vuong is a poet and but uh, although this is a novel it's very poetic I have heard and knowing that he is primarily a poet I can't wait for the lyricism that's in his writing and this is just such a beautiful edition as well I absolutely love the cover and it's just it's so gorgeous and then another goal that I have of mine actually works for two books and so these two books I have started years ago and I never finished um, both for different reasons. So the first one that I started and never finished, I think you guys might yell at me honestly or be very shocked, that's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. So I started reading this book. Um, this is the special anniversary edition as well. I got this at Barnes & Noble, which I believe they still sell this edition, but um, I remember I got a question about this like ages ago when I first started my YouTube channel people asking me where this edition is from, so if you're wondering. I started reading this book and I had to stop because it was breaking my heart so much. I remember it being just so emotive and I just don't think I was at the right place to read it. And so ever since then I've been really nervous about picking it back up, but I think it is time. I think it's finally time. And I know, I love the movie, I loved what I've read, I read about half of it, and I loved the half that I read. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was so emotive, and I think, uh, I just, the timing wasn't right, but I do feel like the timing is finally right now. And then, the next book that I never finished was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, and I know that this is a series of books, um, but I do think you could just read this on its own. Anyway, I started this book again ages ago, um, and I never finished it because I just wasn't really getting into it, and I know that there are so many people who adore this book, and I was really liking it, but there was something that was just... I wasn't like eager to pick it up and I was reading this and The Book Thief I think in the same year and that was around the time that if I wasn't 100% in a book I would just stop reading it because I didn't want it to be detrimental to my enjoyment of the book. Now I feel like I'm a bit more prone to pushing through um, but again also not because I want to be able to go back to it when I'm in a better mood. Anyway, I really would love to finally finish this book. We start from the beginning and finish it. Okay, this is a little ridiculous. <laughs> this is a little ridiculous. You guys are gonna see how crazy I am. We have Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. So I will pick up the paperbacks. So in September of 2022, the Winners by Frederick Bachman is going to be coming out, and that is the third and final book in the Beartown series. Beartown is my favorite contemporary novels ever, Beartown and Us Against You, written by my favorite contemporary author, Frederick Bachman. He is a Swedish author. All of his books are translated into English and sold worldwide. It was also turned into a Swedish miniseries, which I love. I really love foreign films and foreign series because I feel like reading the subtitles, it felt so authentic hearing the characters and knowing that they were uh, truly Swedish. It didn't feel like, like, oh, they were British or American and they were kind of just turned into this different thing. I'm so glad that it was an honest adaptation with Swedish actors and in Sweden. It just felt more realistic and more true and because I didn't know any of the actors, it really felt like those were the actual characters because I didn't like picture them in any other roles. Anyway, so to prove to you how much I love Beartown, um, I have it in paperback, both of them in paperback, and then I have both of them in the original Swedish editions. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm a little crazy. Can I read Swedish? No. Do I wish I could just to be able to read Frederick Bachman? Yes, I absolutely wish I could read Swedish. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> and then we have them in hardback. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. 
So the first book is Bear Town, the second book is Us Against You, and the third book is The Winners, which will be coming out in English in September. It is being published in the U.S. So I want to reread Bear Town and Us Against You in preparation for the third book because I read these in 2019 and I haven't reread them since and it's my favorite contemporary series ever. I just finished reading Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I have read every single book by Frederick Bachman except Brit Marie was here because I don't want to not have an unread Frederick Bachman book on my shelves. I don't want to read all of his books because then I have nothing else to read except a new release. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, I just finished reading um, Anxious People. It has become... It was my second read of 2022 and it has become a favorite book of all time. I am obsessed with it. It is amazing. And then I just watched also the Swedish adaptation on Netflix. So good. So good. Very different from the book. They made a lot of different choices. And my favorite part about Frederick Bachman is his humor. He is absolutely hilarious. And I don't... I just didn't feel like it translated that that well into the miniseries. But also it was really heartfelt and beautiful and very humorous. Although, I don't know, there was just something about it that I wished there was a little bit more. I cannot wait to read reread Bear Ten and Us Against You. I feel like that would be fun. I might just film a whole dedicated reading vlog because I'll be rereading my favorite contemporary series, which is kind of like rereading Anna Karenina for me. Like, that's how much... that's how excited I am about these books. I feel like I need to talk about Frederick Bachman more. I feel like I already do, but not enough. I need to talk about Frederick Bachman more. Um, this is my whole Frederick Bachman shelf. Let's go through them really quickly. We have his two shorter stories or novellas, um, The Deal of a Lifetime, which I love, and then Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer, I really really love about memory loss and um, dementia and family and um, growing older and I used to work in a nursing home on the dementia unit and my grandfather had dementia in his uh, later in his life before he passed and um, this novella is just extremely close to my heart absolutely heartbreaking uh, definitely don't read it if this would be too emotional for you but it's also very comforting to read as well then we have Things My Son Needs to Know About the World, which is a parenting book, but I think anybody in the world at any age, if you're a parent or not, can read this book because we've all been kids, and this is really not only about being a parent, but being a kid, um, and also being a kid of a parent. Um, he's hilarious. Frederick Bachman is just, like, one of the funniest people I don't know. <laughs> um, then we have Brit Marie Was Here, which is like a semi-sequel, sort of, to My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. And then one of my very favorites, his first book, A Man Called Uwe, which is just one of my favorite books on the face of the earth. God, I love this book. I literally recommend it to everybody. Um, Baritone and Us Against You are a bit heavier. They deal with some heavy topics. How did this become a Frederick Bachman? book review video. I don't know, but naturally it did. <laughs> Two other contemporary books I really want to read is, um, contemporary as in they have been written in contemporary times, not contemporary as in like they were, are set in contemporary times, just to make that clear. Um, that is The Overstory, a novel by Richard Powers. This is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I just got someone commented in one of my videos recently that I should read the overstory and I just I didn't answer them yet but I thought to myself I have it on my shelves so I'm so glad that someone recommended it to me. I've heard amazing things about it. I read the first page in the bookshop when I was buying it and again this is one of those instances where I read it in the bookshop, I bought it, and I didn't read it. <laughs> so I definitely want to but I read it, I read the first page and I was uh, baffled by how beautifully written it was. So definitely want to read this book this year. Also, this is one of my absolute favorite covers that I have ever seen on a book because I have a great affinity for trees. Um, and this is like semi, it's not nonfiction, but I have it with my nonfiction books about nature because it does have a lot to do with the natural world. 
And then another one that I really want to read is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have, this is the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. So many people love this book. I feel like I'm going to love this book and very excited to read it. And then uh, watch the movie adaptation because I know so many people love the movie as well. Another book that I recently ordered but I don't have coming, I have it coming in the mail but I don't have it here yet, that is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I really want to get into Haruki Murakami and one of my friends who really likes his books recommended I start with Norwegian Wood and I know so many people love Norwegian Wood so I think that that is a very good place to start. Very excited for that to get here. Hopefully we'll read that soon as well. The next few books are up here, so I have to stand on my ottoman. The next books that I want to read are these two. Alright, so the first one is The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moyers. I got this from a viewer. It was one of their favorites, and it was everything that I loved, and it sounds like everything that I love. So, Optimus Yarn Spinner, which... <laughs> I love the fact that his name is Yarn Spinner. Fun fact, random, very random side note. See, the sun is coming back, yay. Um, I love crocheting and I, I'm trying to get more into knitting. Anyway, so anything to do with yarn, I'm like, oh, yes. I'm also, I have my crochet project. So let me just go grab it because I'm so excited about it. I am crocheting a beanie for the first time. So this is my first hat project. It's coming out really well. It's so cute! And I have, yeah, here's my yarn. I'm really excited about it. So anyway, very random, but yarn spinner. <laughs> yarn spinner made me do it. Okay. Has inherited from his godfather an unpublished manuscript by an unknown writer. He sets off to track down the mysterious author who disappeared into Bookholm, the so-called city of dreaming books. Yarn spinner falls under the spell of this book-obsessed Metropolis, where an avid reader and budding author can find any number of charming attractions, priceless signed first editions, salivating literary agents, and for higher critics. But as he pursues the trail of the missing author, the darker side of Bookholm begins to unveil itself. Cold-blooded book hunters, fearsome uh, cyclopean booklings, sharp-toothed animatomes? Animatomes, I think. And, of course, the Shadow King whose howls rise from deep beneath the city at night. Will Yarn Spinner survive his quest into the world where reading is a genuine adventure? A fantasy, a fantasy tale for every book lover, The City of Dreaming Books is another zany, Zimonian <laughs> adventure for the one, uh, from the one and only Walter Moyers. Th this just sounds absolutely perfect and everything that I would love. And then the next one, I think this might be the last one that I'm going to mention. That is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. This is a middle grade book that literally everyone has been talking about and been loving and been raving about. He just came out with a new book as well. I think something about a whispering door. Um, something like that. And it says, A magical island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. Um, I don't know anything about this book, and I don't want to know anything about it. I want to go into it completely blind, so... That's that. That is the the last book. That is all. Um, those are my reading goals. Those are some of the books that I'm the most eager to pick up in 2022. I hope you guys liked this kind of a vlogish style video where I just like grab books and move around and yeah, a bit less uh, structured and sit downy, which I feel like is more fun. And then I get to move around and not that's it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you recommend any books that I should definitely prioritize, or if you saw any books on my shelves that you think, oh my gosh, Carolyn, stop what you're doing. You didn't mention that one, but you should read that one. If you saw any books on my shelves that you think I should read, let me know. Let me know what books you are excited to read in 2022. I would love to know what are your reading goals. Let's inspire each other. I would love to know. One of my favorite videos to watch is New Year Reading Goals because it really inspires me to think, oh, I should try and do that too. Let me know all of your new New Year thoughts, your reading thoughts. What does your TBR look like? Um, I'm not really a TBR person, but I do like to think about the potential books to read or that I'm at least keeping my eye on, which is exactly what this video is. So I hope you liked it. I hope you found 
some inspiration or maybe some book recommendations and yes thank you so much for watching i hope you are having a fantastic january and that you are also reading some amazing books i will see you very soon in another video happy reading oh do you want to say goodbye to willow let me grab her okay willow and i are bidding you adieu goodbye say bye willow <laughs> Bye. She's just staring out of the window. Bye, baby. Say bye. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>